Good evening, let's continue on with uh, part three dealing with uh, Brian Jean Daniel's video on the, the anti uh, miscegenation uh, laws and sodomite marriage and the Jesuits. But let's look at the, this Loving versus Virginia thing. Uh, Loving versus Virginia is a landmark civil rights decision of the United States Supreme Court. Court, which invalidated laws prohibiting inter interracial marriage. The case was brought by Mildred Loving. The question is, why would there be laws forbidding interracial marriage? <laughs> what? Where these laws come from? Between a black woman and Richard Loving, a white man. She wasn't truly black. She was half black, half Native American. What was that doing anything? Who had been sentenced to a year in prison in Virginia for marrying each other. That marriage violated the state's anti-miscegenation statute, the Racial Integrity Act of 1924, which prohibited marriage between people classified as white and people classified as collared. The Supreme Court's unanimous decision... Now remember, he's all for this. He thinks these laws should be in operation. ...determined that this prohibition was unconstitutional, reversing Pace versus Alabama, 1883, and ending all race-based legal restrictions on marriage in the United States. You're going to see where this is leading to here in a minute. The decision was followed by an increase in interracial marriages in, US, in the U.S. and it is remembered annually on Loving Day, June 12th. It has been the subject of two movies as well as several songs beginning in 2013. It was cited as precedent in U.S. federal court decisions hold restrictions on, uh-oh, same-sex marriage in the United States unconstitutional, unconstitutional, including in the, the uh, 2015 Supreme Court decision. That one there. You mean repealing laws against interracial marriage actually paved the way for sodomite marriage? Yeah, because you let the left, you left the left, you let the left take the lead. This is what happens when conservative Christians allow the left wing to get a hold of an issue, an issue like civil rights, and let them take the lead on it, where they write on something, and then they're going to go from, from that, and they're going to jump to something that's totally absurd. That's what happened here. The idea is that marriage is clear between a man and a woman. That's just common sense. That's just the whole, that's just... Nature teaches you that, that. Nature teaches that's one we want. Nature teaches you that marriage is between a man and woman. But when you let the left take an issue of the right, uh, the right stance on an issue, like they were here, then you open the door for them to take something to a bizarre, absurd level. And that's what they did. They opened the door for it. They were wrong, saying so an interracial marriage. Between a man and woman. And now that opened the door for the sodomite marriages. Yes, it did. Mm -hmm. But it's natural and holy and acceptable in God's sight for interracial marriage, right? Yeah, it's an interracial marriage and a sodomite marriage. You can't tell the difference. And I don't know if I've said this in other studies. I know I've, I've, I've confessed to a very grievous sin that I used to be involved in. I was a pornography addict for a long time. You guys keep talking about this pornography thing. Uh, but before the Lord saved me, and even afterwards, I struggled with it for a while. And the Lord, well, if you say, well, okay, he supposed to live a changed life. Finally, got gave me victory over the thing. It's a terrible sin. A lot of people struggle with it. Um, there's people that struggle with alcohol and things like that. Um, it's called sin nature. That's why you struggle with it. We all have sin natures. You know, I'm just being honest with you. But I remember when I would look at websites and stuff like that, interracial fornication was in a separate category. Interracial fornication was in a separate category. How bizarre is that? That must mean we shouldn't have interracial marriage. 
know what it is, is that men, some men partic like particular women, like he liked Hispanic women. So if he was going to see pornography, what would he want to see? Hispanic women. So they have a category for Hispanic women. They have a category for black women. They have a category for oriental women. They have a category for every type of woman. It's like going to a market. You know, fat women, slim women, tall women, short women. You know, so that's what that's about. If you have a particular leaning to a particular type of woman in pornography, that's what you look at. It wasn't with just men and men or men and women, excuse me. Yeah. You know. Uh, men and women, thankfully, I was never into sodomy looking at that stuff, but uh, men and women, it was never just classified in with that. It was a separate category. Why? It's a perversion. And I'm real sorry if you're involved in that. Well, pornography is a perversion. All you're doing is having a particular taste in it, a particular aspect to it. And so if you like a particular type of woman, you look at pornography, you're looking for that type of woman. And, you know, the, my, I don't, the, the thing would be the, the issue with the woman, you know. The whole thing and stuff, it's a perversion. No, it's not a perversion. Interracial marriage is not a perversion. Pornography is a perversion. So if something's associated with pornography, it's going to be per perverted. It is. This guy thinks interracial marriage is a perversion. 1241 in. He thinks inter interracial marriage is a perversion, not... He's from a pornography, and they have a separate category for mixing the, the, the races. But that's still, that's still wanting to see the woman, a particular type of woman. I mean, so that's not the issue there. I mean, so the issue is, he's saying interracial, well, because pornography separates it into interracial, you know, categories here. You know, so that must mean that interracial marriage is a perversion. And you see one perversion is accepted, and then another one is accepted. What do you think is coming next? So that's it. He thinks because interracial marriage laws were broken down, that led to sodom. The sodomite laws. That's, that's, that's how this guy thinks, people. We'll talk about that more in just a little bit. Background. Anti-miscegenation laws in the United States had been in place in certain states since before the United States declared independence. I wonder who set up those anti-miscegenation laws. Yeah, Puritans. Yeah. Theocratic state people who want to control people's lives. I wonder. At the time that the decision was made, 16 states, all southern states, had such laws. Again, you know, earlier in the video, I showed that there that uh, in 1685, the Catholics had no laws against interracial marriage, only that you couldn't marry non-Catholics. But everybody else, those that were controlled by Protestants, uh, they were saying no interracial marriage. And there was Catholic bishops that uh, act. These people are post-millennial. See, I told you, this guy's not a dispensationalist. What are the people he's talking about? A post millennial. That's what's bringing the king to me. And therefore, they were keeping the, they were defending that based on keep bringing the king to me and the racial, keeping the racial issue. Actually, you know, help to petition certain people within the government. And I'm going to show you who those certain people are here as we continue. It's an interesting thing. Um, but anyhow, it says here the plaintiffs in the case were Mildred Dolores Loving. Me, Jeter, uh, a woman of African American and Rappahannock Native American descent, and Richard Perry Loving, a white man. I'll tell you what white man means. I guess it doesn't matter, according to them. Uh, the couple had three children Donald, Peggy, and Sydney. Richard Loving died aged 41 in 1975 when a drunk driver struck his car in Carolyn County, Virginia. Um, Mildred Loving lost her right eye in the same accident. She died of pneumonia on May 2nd, 2008, Milford, Virginia, age 68. Interesting because it was June, like late June, when he died in that car accident. And I would have been born just about a week later. So what? A week and like a few days later. I was born July 7th, 1975. So very interesting. I thought that was kind of a unique thing. But now look at this. 
criminal proceedings. At the age of 18, Mildred became pregnant, and in June 1958, the couple traveled to Washington, D.C. to marry, thereby evading Virginia's Racial Integrity Act of 1924, which made marriage between whites and non-whites a crime. So this wonderful thing that you have some Christians, I guess, would be for what they did. There's fornication, and then they evade the law. And this is a... It's an immoral law. It's an immoral law. Fornication, of course, that's, that's, that's another issue. That's sin. But it's an immoral law. They have a right to marry. So what are we talking about? It's like slaves fle fleeing from slavery. They have a right to flee. <laughs> you know, so slavery is immoral. Good thing. It's so wonderful now that we have laws, anti-miscegenation laws lifted. See? He's for them. He's for them. If this guy put that out there, he'd be dead in ministry. This is what he's talking about putting his DVDs out. The things he doesn't want to be. You know, people don't watch basically about me. There's 5,000 views on this. And, uh, you know, 122 people uh, thumbed this up. But that's why I stay on it, because this is this is what this is who he is. This is what he's preaching. And what heroes the lovings were. Fornication. Forget the fornication, it's a sin. The issue is the law. And law, evading the law. If I do evade the law, not not registering your child, not you know, birth certificate and stuff like that. This guy picks and picks and chooses what laws he wants to obey. They returned to the small town of Central Point, Virginia. Based on an anonymous tip, local police raided their home at night, hoping to find them having sex, which was also a crime according to Virginia law. Can you imagine there's a law in the book for this? How any sane person could make a law like this and defend it? A, a church, a, a church age believer, defending the state coming in and worrying about what race you're married to and then trying to find a couple break in and, and arrest you for having sex with the person. Amazing. When the officers found the loving sleeping in their bed, Mildred pointed out the marriage certificate on the bedroom wall. That certificate became the evidence for the criminal charge of cohabiting as man and wife against the peace and dignity of the Commonwealth that was brought against them. The lovings were charged under Section 2058 of the Virginia Code, which prohibited interracial couples from being married out of state and then returning to Virginia. And Section 20-59 was classified miscegenation as a felony punishable by a prison sentence of between one and five years. And then you go down through here, uh, you know, where we just, we already read that quote, so I'm not going to read it again. Um, and we're not going to read all this different stuff down through here because it, it gets kind of long. You can read it yourself, but this is where I want to focus in on here. The loving supported by the ACLU appealed the decision to the United States Supreme Court. They did not attend the oral arguments in Washington, but their lawyer, Bernard S. Cohen, conveyed the message he had been given by Richard Loving to the court. Mr. Cohen, tell the court, I love my wife, and it is just unfair, but I can't live with her in Virginia. Okay, so... Yeah. <laughs> Anybody in the right mind says, yeah, you're absolutely right. What, are you people crazy? Are you people out of your minds? <laughs> and this guy's for that. Americans! Americans telling a man and woman they can't live, they can't get marry because of their race. You people are food loops. Puritans did it. <laughs> okay. You know, the Southerners did it. So you have the, um, see if there's a, another one down through here. So you have two lawyers there. There's Bernard Cohen, and then this other guy I'm going to show you, Philip Hirschkopf. Here's Bernard Cohen. Here's his uh, page on Wikipedia. Um, no, no, these guys advocating free speech. You can't lose, a, lose your free speech, but he's, he's telling other people they can't get married of in, um, uh, mixed races. Remember, it was a black woman who witnessed to uh, his wife. But that's, we can't go back. You know, he's, you know, he's, got him too far. he's a separatist. He's a segregationist people. He's hidden it, it's, but it's out there. If you look for it, he's a segregationist. Just like L. L John Phillips guy, a guy is, he wants, he wants to live he doesn't want to live with black, black people. And we're talking about Christians. Even just, it's just fact, bad enough that we want to live with other people. But the fact is that Christians, Christians, he wants to se segregate among each other. 
We're talking about interracial marriage among Christians. And these food people, these food cakes are against that. There it talks about uh, uh, Cohen argued for the plaintiffs Richard and Mildred Loving in the case of Loving versus Virginia. Okay. He co-authored a blog entry in 2007 for the Huffington Post about the legal standing of same-sex marriage. So the same lawyer for the ACLU is... See, you left, left the, this, the right should have been leading this fight, knocking this down, saying this is absurd, you know, the problem is. But you let the left take something and they're right about it, and then they're going to jump to another something else where they're wrong on. So the ACLU, ACLU, ACLU saw something, they said, yeah, we're going to win this one because we're right on this one, and we're going to move it to where it's degenerate. Everyone knows the marriage is between a man and woman, and there's no restrictions on racial issues. Never in the Bible. Nowhere. Nothing. Except the issue of the Jews. The Jews had certain restrictions, but they had to remain Jewish. So a woman coming had a man or a woman coming in had to adopt to their customs, like a Ruth. He shows it well, you know, they had problems, they had problems. No more problems than any other marriage. The fact is, God blessed them. God blessed the Ruth by giving them, uh, being the uh, grandchild, the grandmother of uh, David. Thanks, you know, I'm going to go through his video on the interracial marriage issue. It's a long video, but I'll go through it. He's going and he's defending, you know, Mildred, uh, the, well, the Lovings there, Loving versus Virginia. And then he goes and he's fighting for sodomite marriage. But he's a liberal. Well, shock. He's ACLU. He's a liberal. You know what Anderson would say? He's also a Jew. <laughs> so Anderson would talk about being a Jew. But he's a liberal. Okay, so well, shock. You let the ACLU le lead on something and they get that, they're going to move to something else. But, uh, where was he educated? Look over here at the sidebar. His name is Cohen, so I'd, I'd be surprised. This is It'd be uh, Bernard Baron Cohen. Sounds Jewish to me. Some details. Uh, alma mater, Georgetown University. Hmm. He's a Jesuit. It sounds yeah. Jewish to me. Cohen. Might be a Jesuit. That's what trained. And uh, his religion there is Judaism as well. Interesting. Oh, so he's a Jewish Jesuit. A Jewish Jesuit? <laughs> Holy cow. I know he doesn't report. Uh, there are Jew Jews that will betray their own people and go to the Roman Catholic whore that slaughtered the Jews uh, for the last 2,000 years, essentially. They'll go there and backstab their own people. He's a disgusting individual. George, I never heard of a Jesuit Jew. Town University. What about uh, Philip Hirschkopf? Here's his profile, martindale.com. Both these men are still alive. Look down here, law school, Georgetown University. The liberals. I don't care the Jesuits, I don't care the Jewish, I don't care about the liberals. But the point is, is that they were defending something that was right, knocking down a law that was immoral and unconstitutional and unbiblical, unscriptural, pushed by people who believe in a theocratic kingdom, not church age, not people who believe in dispensational church. That were church age believers and believe in separation of church and state. See, Brian doesn't believe in separation of church and state. He wants the state to help him when he wants to help, and then he wants the state to use power to stop other people. I can try using the police officers against that other church. So he's going to just go on in here and talk about these other guys. We'll stop here. Uh, he's about the Jesuits. He'll put this up and uh, we'll continue on with the study. So I stay on this guy. Stay on this guy. He needs to be exposed over and over and over again. He's been deceiving people, representing, just like Anderson, like probably representing, he's the King James Bible believer. This is the King James Bible stuff. And so he let the left come in, take an issue that we should have left let off. This is ridiculous. You don't back up this nonsense. Instead, King James Bible believers are going to fight them. Keep those lords. <laughs> yeah, we gotta get those races apart. We can't let them marry. So, 
That's what happens. That's what happens. So then the left comes in, something to write on, then they come in and they'll jump over to something totally perverse. So we'll stop here and put this up. Amen. Thank you.